Hey guys, just coming to you this Wednesday to discuss topic number three in the center of the universe discussion. Um, number three is Jesus gives us the gospel. And the text is out of 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 27. I'm not going to take the time to read that because it is a long scripture. But I want y'all to dig into that this week and read those verses. Um, and, and the big idea that it's talking about is Jesus has equipped every believer to be, an, to be a part of growing his kingdom, right? And we have an important part to play in that. And, and it's really two folds, two different places and purposes that we can use that. This is why I really I wanted y'all to do your spiritual gifts test this week or this past week because it's going to be crucial that you know those going forward in your life and in, in this lesson. And so, you know, we say spiritual gifts a lot, but and that might, for you at your age, that might kind of make it sound, I guess, Churchy is not the word, but it might make it sound worse. Oh, that's something I need to do when I'm older. I don't serve in the church now. That's a church thing. Um, I don't need that right now. But you do. Because another way to look at your spiritual gifts are seeing them as God-given talents and strengths. And God-given talents and strengths, you can use at any age, right? Because Christ gives them to you when you're saved. The Holy Spirit dwells in you and brings them to you as salvation. So... He wouldn't give them to you then if he didn't want you to use them. And they aren't just given to you just to hold on to, to be like your thing. Like, oh, I'm brunette. Oh, I'm left-handed. Oh, I have the strength of leadership. That's It's not given to you for you to be able to brag on or look down on people who may have different ones. They're giving to you for you to use for the benefit of others. But you have to remember that using or not using them is also going to have a part in your life, right? When you use your God-given strengths, talents, your spiritual gifts, whatever you call them, they will benefit your life as well. Example I gave y'all last week was me at work. I have been given the gift of leadership, and by me choosing to use that, I've been I've had success moving up at the bank and, and moving into a leader role which has been able to provide for my family and given me a great career. So let's um, talk about, you know, why how do, why God selects the gifts he does for you and how he use them. God doesn't, he's not like Santa Claus. He doesn't just randomly pull the strengths and talents out of a bag and just hand them over. Whatever comes out is what you get. He selects them based on the role he wants you to play within his story. Remember, we've talked about his story a lot over the last few weeks. He's, and his story involves you using those, your talent, strengths, and, and really in two separate places and for two different reasons. So this week I'm going to talk to you about those places and that reason. The first place that we use our talents and strengths is within the church. And it's within the church that God places you in. So you are given your spiritual gifts selected based on where he wants you to be and what church he wants you to use those in. We're all given different gifts, but when we come together as one church body, that's when we can best utilize them. You know, just like if we have different parts of our body, our hands can't do what our feet do, doesn't make one more important than the other. We have to have all parts of our body for it to work right. Same thing with our spiritual gifts. So when you think about spiritual talents and gifts within the church, I think of it kind of like school. Um, it's where you're going to make friends and spend time with your friends. It's where you're really going to learn how to use your strengths and talents. And it's where you're going to strengthen them by practicing them and, and doing it in front of a, a safe environment of cr other Christians who will hold you accountable, who will help you, who will guide you, who will pray for you as you really learn to learn how to use that gift and those talents to benefit others. Um, at church, we benefit other Christians by using our gifts with their walk with Christ. That's how we help Christian. We help within the church using our gifts, and and we help them by encouraging them to use their own gifts. Right, everyone using their gifts and strengths within the church when it brought together, it makes that body strong. 
So when we're using ours, if I'm using mine and you're using yours and we're all strengthening each other and learning how to use them better together, that's when we're going to build a strong church body to accomplish God's will for that church. Ephesians 4, 16 says, let me find it on my phone. Ephesians 4, 16 talks about that. And it says on here. Ephesians 4, 16. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So when we're using our gifts and our strengths and talents in church, God uses those to help each other to build our Christian walk. So, you know, that's inside the church, right? That's the first place we use them. We use, the first place is within the church, and we use those to help strengthen other Christians in their walk. The second place that we use our talents and strengths is outside the church. It's, it's in the world, and they have a very different purpose in the world. You aren't strengthening others' walk with Christ. You are using your strengths and talents to bring the loss to Him. When you use your gifts with the lost and you allow Jesus to be in control, they will see him through your life. So the world is more like our job. If you think about having a job, you know, you may only see these people once in your entire life. You may only have one time to affect them for Christ. Unlike church where you, you have lots of friends and you see them constantly um, or, or at school. Others are depending on our service for their eternity. So, you know, they're not depending on us to make a withdrawal or to cut their hair or to clean their teeth, but they're depending on us to do our job for their own eternity. And and they need our gifts to know Jesus has already written and paid that price for their eternity. They need us to use those gifts. But the, you know, the earnings, well, I earn a paycheck at work. The earning here is not money. It's souls added to the kingdom of God. Just like your our earthly job, it requires us to attend school, right? I can't just become a banker and never have attended school. You can't be a doctor without going to school. Your Whatever profession you choose requires you to go to school. The same thing with our spiritual gifts and strengths. The For us to be able to use them the most effective way, we have to be in school. We have to be involved in church. Church is where we're going to grow those. So, you know, what does that really mean for us? It means that church can't be an option. You don't get up in the morning and decide if you're going to go to school or if you're going to go to work. You have to. You have to go to school. You have to go to work because you have to learn and your parents go to jail if you don't. And you have to go to work when you're older because you have to provide for your family. Church is the same way. It should never be an option. It should be an absolute in your life. Get up, go. It is, it is a requirement. And just like with school, the more you put into church, the more you get out. You know, if you attend school and you, the more you study, the more you pep rallies and games you attend, the more uh, groups and teams that you join, the more friends that you make, the better school is. If you just show up for school, you never get involved in anything. Maybe you just come for one class. You're not involved in anyone. You never talk to anyone. You leave as soon as it's over. School's not going to be a very meaningful experience for you. It's not going to have much of an impact on your life. You're really not going to be invested in it. Church is the exact same way. If you just show up for the preaching, you never get to know others. You never talk to others. You don't join a connection group. You're not involved in helping with a ministry. It's not going to be impactful. It's not going to be an investment in your life. It's not ever going to become that requirement that it should be. It's just going to be an option. So, just thinking about that, what does that mean for you? It means that God gave you these strengths and talents to use in two places. Within the church and in the world. He wants you to be a part of both of them. And to play the part that he has for you in his story, you have to be willing and able to use your talents and strengths in both places. He, he, won't, he won't 
be able to use us effectively in the world if we're not as involved with the church as we should be. He won't be able to use us effectively in church if we're not invested. So for us, our, our life, it really means we need to take a look at what do we need to be doing? What ministry does he want me to serve in? You know, and, and all, like I said, all that comes back to your spiritual gifts. So that's why it is so important now to know what they are. You know, we've been asked to help serve um, in the kids ministry and in the, um, the nursery. Those of you who have found your spiritual gifts and you know that's something you'd be great at, great, you already know where you want to work. Maybe yours is just helping with the cleaning or maybe it's helping with music. Whatever it is within the church, the more you get involved, the better. And, you know, honestly, girls, the same thing goes for 628. If you're not watching the videos and not doing the studies, if you're not being part of the group me, doing our activities, you're not going to be invested in the 628. And this group is such a special group I want you to be. So this week, take time. Think about your gifts. Take time to pray over God, how God wants you to use them within the church. Talk to your parents about what their gifts are, how he wants them to use theirs, what part of church they're involved in. Make a commitment together to become invested in it if you're not. And then pray that you will have spiritual guidance how to use that in the world as well. I love you guys. I hope you have a great week. Bye.